The Painting with Magic Show with Brandon Thomas is brought to you by thomasartsupply.com. Welcome to Painting with Magic. My name is Brandon Thomas, and I'd like to welcome you to join me to paint along. Hi, I'm Brandon Thomas. Welcome to Painting with Magic. Me, it's me, it's Brand T. Welcome back to Painting with Magic. On today's show, let's do something kind of simple and fun and just have fun with it today. Hey, this is David Jackson, the painting paramedic. I'm a Brandon Thomas art instructor from the Mississippi, Alabama region. I want to take this time to wish Brandon Thomas and the Painting with Magic staff a happy 10th anniversary along with, with Thomas Art. Uh, we all enjoy all of the, everything that you do for us, Brandon, and giving us out great products, and we hope that you have 10 more. God bless you. Hey, it's me, it's me, it's Brandon T here with the Painless Magic Show, and today I'm going to do a nice little mountain scene, something we have done a little bit. It's an easy way to do it. I think I'm going to darken this up a little bit. I'm going to take a little more phthalo blue. I'm going to grab a little touch of ivory black. Just a tiny little bit. Just to darken it up just a little bit. Alright, let's make our mountain now. Let's make a big strong mountain. Just a little bit. Just follow the shapes that your mountain's going. Don't keep face on it. This old easel can take it to just worm it in there. Hey, it's me, it's me, it's Brandon T with the Painting with Magic show, and today we're going to start a brand new project. They're not perfect. Okay, we're going to start getting the lumps areas kind of designed in here. A solid stroke, that's important. Anything you're painting, use confident strokes because if you don't, you're gonna have messes. Hey, it's me, it's me, it's Brandon T here with the Painting with Magic show. And today I thought we'd do another little fun painting project for you. 
Hi, I'm Aaron Akers, Brandon and Thomas Certified Instructor out of McMinnville, Oregon. Brandon and I just want to congratulate you on 10 years of amazing content on YouTube and the paintings that you've created are amazing as well. I uh, just want to tell you how grateful I am to be taught by you and to be able to teach others your technique. Thank you very much. Just add a few extra little highlights. Okay, so now I'm not my look a little weird too because I flipped the painting around. It's another painting, it's up all the way around because I'm not we just hide it down here. Love the reflector, so I thought we'll go all out and we'll do one with a little bit more detail. Excited to get started on this brand new season. Work it in there. And because I have the amazing one on the canvas, it's allowing me to blend right on the canvas. Brandon, congratulations on your 10 year anniversary. That is exciting. And I just wanted to show you what you've inspired me to do. Thanks, buddy. You got, we'll have so much time to play around these mountains. It may sound like I'm scraping, but I'm really not. I'm using very no pressure at all. No pressure at all. Shadow. Real soft. Now I want to add in some beautiful trees. Brandy here with the Painting with Magic show, and today I have another awesome project for you. Here you go, the monkey face. So what we're going to do, take a two inch brush and go into some Epiphone Red. Thank you for watching. I love you, but Jesus loves you more. God bless you, and I'll see you real soon. Hey, it's me, it's me, it's Brandon T here with the Painting with Magic Show, and it's so great to be back with you in the studio to be celebrating 10 years of Painting with Magic. And this is not only 10 years of Painting with Magic, but this is 10 years of us painting together. And it means so much to me that you are still around after 10 years. 
And I hope you really enjoyed that little introduction of of all these different seasons gone by and so many and all the folks that sent in those videos to help celebrate 10 years. It means so much to me. Thank you all so much for your support for sending those videos in. Uh, it means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Today's painting, I thought we would revisit our first ever project. And the reason I want to do that for is because season one, we didn't have a lot of good equipment. Okay, I was using like a GoPro duct tape to an old broken tripod. <laughs> so we got the good stuff now. So we got good stuff with a monkey face on it. And I want to do that project or something really, really similar to it. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. What I have is my 16 by 20 inch stretched canvas. And this is a Frederick Red Label canvas, medium tooth. And on top of this canvas, I have my signature amazing white medium. Uh, just a very thin, even coat. And to check if you have the right amount, I always want to just tap it with your finger. And you should be able to see your fingerprint come through that very easily. And the oil paint that I'm using is the Grumbacher Pre-Tested Oil Colors. You can get these online at most places. And the colors that I'm using is the standard colors we always use. And that'll be on the screen for you. And you'll be able to get that same print off at BrianThomasArt.com. We'll have a link in the description. As well with a supply list you can get. Okay. And the brushes are my signature brushes. You can get at ThomasArtSupply.com. And before we get into the project. Please make sure if you haven't subscribed. Please subscribe to the channel. Like, share, and comment. It helps us so much every time you subscribe. Like and comment. Uh, it really helps us build this channel up. And it gets YouTube to send out to other people who enjoy content just like this. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll grab the old two-inch brush and get monkey face on. We'll go into a little cadmium yellow light. We're going to start off a little different today. We're going to do some yellow today. Remember, we're going to revisit project one. So we're going to the little uh, this yellow. So going down here to the palette. Brand new cadmium yellow. That's what we're going to start off with. I just tap a little brush in it. I still got an amazing one on the old brush. That's okay. Tell you what, let's go back here now. Okay, so we're going to start at the bottom of our sky. This is about halfway up on the canvas. And let's do some X strokes. Okay, with just some cadmium yellow light. A little bit more paint. But I always start off a lot and then add in a little bit more as I go, just so I don't get it overwhelming. Overwhelmingly powerful. Okay. And then just work it up. A little more. There we go. And let's get this covered up really good with this yellow. We won't need a lot of it. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just cover the whole top with yellow. <laughs> and just do it. Let's just do it. Ah, you monkey face on it. You wouldn't want this to be a winter scene. This would be the snow. Okay? But I'm tired of that old winter, man. It's been zero degrees here. I'm ready for some sunshine and palm trees. That's a good one that we're doing this one. Okay, so I got all this painted in yellow, every bit of the top of the sky, and we'll do the same thing to the water. Before we do the water, let's go down to the palette and mix up some, uh, get some yellow ochre. All right, go right next to it, and we're going to add in yellow ochre right in there with it. Then a yellow ochre, get a good little amount on there. I'll get up good. Okay, let's go back up here to old canvas. Okay, so we're going to start at the top and bring it down. Okay. And do a little adjusting on this easel. It's got a little bit of a little bit of shake to it, but that's okay. And bring it down into your yellow, and as it'll start blending into it, you'll start seeing it blend into it. Maybe this light that's causing this issue. Let's see. Yeah, there it was. Is that old light? <laughs> this is a lot. The light was touching the canvas a little bit. Okay. So I'm bringing it into the sides like this. See that? So you get that little bit of a 
dome look, which helps with the glow. Okay, you see there? Nice little glow. Then we will go to burnt sienna. We'll go down here real quick. We'll grab a little burnt sienna. Just a little bit of that old burnt sienna. Okay, and we'll go up here and see how this does. And we're going to start at the top of it as well. And bring it on in. And you'll see how it just complements the all these colors here, especially the yellow ochre. Just like a darker version of that. A little bit more on these corners. But this project, super fun project. It's been 10 years since I've done this project. And I think you're going to really enjoy especially with all the new cameras and everything, you'll be able to see it so much better. Awesome. There we go. Okay, I think with that, I got my base layer done for the sky. And we'll take a number six fan brush, and we'll go back to the old palette. And we're going to take our number six fan brush and go into a little of this burnt sienna. I may just grab a little bit of yellow ochre just to help tone it down just a little bit. But it don't take much. I'm just going to knock some of it out. Okay, and we'll go back up here and see how this goes. Okay, so do our clouds. We're going to do something we similar we've done before similarly. We're just going to do some little swirls. Just like this. Okay, and it helps so much to add these beautiful little clouds like this in here. Makes it so easy to do. Here the little brush. And we can go over here. Add them in. Okay, just like that. Okay, reload your brush. Just work them. Just like that. Just let it scrub around, move around. You'll get all kinds of nice little things happening. Really easily. Really easy. These are my favorite techniques to do clouds. Okay, let it blend out a little bit. Over here, we're going to some more. Little bitty pinches of paint. Make sure you're doing little bitty pinches of paint. There's so much you can do with this project, with these skies and everything. If you wanted to, you could add a little burnt, uh, a little burnt sienna mixed with a little Prussian blue if you want a little darker tone. But it would take just a little tiny bit of that if you decided to do it. A little bit of that. But I think we're just going to do the pr uh, burnt sienna. And we'll see how that goes for us. So far, I like this, how it is. Real simple, real simple sky. It's got a lot going on in it. Okay, then I think we'll take a two inch landscape brush, a uh, two inch hake brush. Okay, a two inch hake brush and just gently go over top of those. Now, one thing I wanna point out about the hake brush is it's made out of Natural goat hair, okay? It's made of natural goat hair. And super, super soft. And so this brush here probably takes the longest to get broke in. Because at first it will shed hair. It will do it because it's super soft. And it's very thick paint. Because most most artists use these for uh, watercolor painting. So, But I specifically designed this one for oil painting. So it has, you know, stronger... Uh, glue and everything that's in here. It's got a stronger ferrule system in it. So it worked great for us for this. But super, super soft. Super soft. Okay, see how it's nicely blended in just really good. Now down here at the bottom, look at that. Ain't that cool? You can, you can do something like that with a skyscape with like, with like uh, sun rays forming in there. But we're not doing that today. I think it's time to start working on our water. And 
for the water. We'll use the old same old dirty brush and we'll go into some some of that cabin yellow we'll put down here. Okay, so we're going to take our yellow and we'll take some yellow ochre too with it. This just doesn't matter. It, it'll give it some harmony in the water if it has a little bit of that colors mixed together with it. Okay, and we'll just use that and we'll put in our water. And we're just going to do flat strokes. Flat strokes. Bring that water up. Bring that water up. We can do the whole whole bottom if you want to, but there's no need to. Bring that water up. We're going to make it as flat as we can. Bring it up. Bring it up to the sky. Just like that there. So now we got our water and sky in. And I'm going to make changes to this project that I didn't do in the original one. In the original one I didn't have, I don't think I had anything over here. So I want to add a little something back here to kind of go with that side. I think it will look good that way. So we'll go to the old palette and we'll mix up as a color for this. Okay, so our base is going to be burnt sienna. A little bit of Snap green. Mix it all up in there. Get it all good and cooked up. And a little bit of that Prussian blue will help turn burnt sienna into more like burnt umber. Okay, maybe a little black, a little bit more blue. So it's got a nice color to it. Move it to the side there. Maybe we'll make it a little darker. Little tiny touches of the Prussian blue to help darken it up. And the reason that works with the blue is because Persian, uh, burnt sienna and all the browns are basically dark orange. And we know that the complementary color of orange is blue. If you watched our, our primary color series, which is still on YouTube for free. Okay, so we got that. And then we have our burnt sienna here. And we're going to take both these colors and we're going to make some, some background things happen. So let me just clean off the old knife get a brush. We're going to take the Burnt Sienna and just tap into Burnt Sienna with the old one inch landscape brush. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so back here we can start to play with some like foothills or mountains that kind of live here. Now this didn't have this one in the original one. I don't want that. I'll tell you what, let's change to a number three fan brush real quick. So I'll get a little bit more detail out of that than I can in the, the one inch brush. A little more peaky. Okay. Just an island way back through here. I love those little island scenes you'll see. They're so beautiful. Okay, see I'm getting little points and peaks out of that. Now I'll switch back to the one inch brush, which will help me soften it and fade it out a little bit. It just has a nice, soft, beautiful warmth to it. And then we'll switch back to the darker tone we mixed up. And put it right about here. Okay, just get the main area shaped in. You see, it's basically burnt umber that you made. That's why I love burnt sienna so much for. I can save space on the palette for other colors and I can mix up my own flavor of burnt umber. Just a 
I like that right there. You can even add mist in between those if you want to. Little bit of this in the water a little bit. Way back out through there is a little, a little island you'll see. You can even add green if you wanted to to it, but I feel like it would just be more warmer if you just do it with the browns. Okay, that looks pretty good there. And then we can start working on our land on the other side of this. Okay. We'll start off with the burnt sienna like we did before. But bring it in here. But this project's going to be a little different than the original one. Simply because I want to do it a little differently, but still give you a lot of what that original offered. I'll tell you what, let's go over to the old two-inch brush. Bring that out. Bring it out there. There we go, see that land. This is just burnt sienna. Just burnt sienna. Just good old burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna. It's an absolutely gorgeous color. Bring it out a little flatter. There we go. Then we're going to switch to their old homemade burnt umber and mix it in here. And as well, just kind of add it in there. You'll just have darks and lights all through it. This is a very, uh, one of those paintings that's not going to take a lot of colors to do. And honestly, most of the projects we do don't require a whole lot of color. But as you go up to the peaks of those areas, just let that paint fade in. And then just let it fade in a little bit. Then let it kind of fade back. More at burnt sienna, but I'm gonna change brushes to the one inch brush, it's cleaner. Just to fix these little edges up a little bit better. See? This is really really working out pretty good. And I think we'll add in as a little let's add as a little something over here real quick. Maybe a little island or something right there. Maybe a little some that darker in there with it. I just absolutely love these these tones going on in here. It's been so cold, it's just warming me right up, boys. To the hake brush now, I'm just gonna use it to kind of help me fade in underneath here to kind of make some reflections. Soften. There we go. So, so far we got a pretty good looking little base here I think working out for us pretty good. So, back here in the back section on the other side, I think you could use some taps. So I'm not going to use anything on the brush. Let's just, uh, first of all, let's wash the old brush. Okay, so I got the brush good, dry, and clean, and let's reload it into the burnt sienna. Okay, and it's just going to be just out here, just a little tiny bit back there. And then you just take some of that dirty coal, dirty tone there, and then I think that'll work out just fine. Okay, 
I'll tell you what, let's go to the old palette. Let's start working on some grassy tones for this, uh, for highlights. Okay, I took a clean one inch, uh, two inch brush. And we're going to go right through both of these colors. Yellow ochre, cadmium yellow. We'll grab some titanium white with it. Some of that burnt sienna. Okay, that's good. Tap it in there. And we'll go back here and see if it sticks. If it don't stick, we'll add a little bit of yeah, amazing white to it or into yellow. Let's go back here. Okay, let's see if it sticks. I don't want to be really punchy, but I think I will add in just a little bit of amazing white. Just a tiny bit. Just to get the extra little sticking power. There we go. See, now it's sticking. Sticking a little better now. You can turn this painting into so many different things. See how that grass just flows and lays right on top of it. This is just a relaxing scene here. And I have just a pinch of amazing white on this. However you decide to do it, that's how you'll do it. Go. Now on the little bitty side over that little bitty island, we'll do the same thing. Except we'll use a one inch brush on it. There we go. And we're just about finished with this little project, ain't we? Just a few little highlights back here. Just a little bit. Now I think we're ready to start working on adding in our some water lines and stuff in here. And then we can start working on our palm trees. Let's go to the old palette. Okay, we'll take some amazing white and titanium white together. Mix them up. We want a nice thin paint. And we're just going to take a little burnt sienna with that just to help dirty it up a little bit. You don't want to use straight white. Okay. And we we'll us get a little of that. And let's take it back here and see if this does anything for us. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll start working back here. Let it fade away. Let it kind of fade that way a little bit. Now we got a little water going around it. Now we'll take a little bitty small end of the knife. And the small little blade helps me get a lot more control. And the same way over here. On this side. There's some water lines. Then this little island. Now we have all this nice little water lady in here. I think it's looking pretty good there. 
Okay, fix this up right there. You just have to decide and just play around with it and figure out how you want it to lay, how you want it to go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now you can always soften those down, but I would soften them a little bit later. But I tell you what, let's go down here and start working on our palm tree mixture. Okay, so basically the palm trees are going to be burnt sienna, a little Prussian blue. We want a basically a burnt umber tone. Maybe a little more burnt sienna. Okay. Then we'll grab our old liner brush with some mineral spirits on it, a little bit of terpenoid. Okay, so we're just going to thin down this color with our number two script liner brush. You can use a little NTO in it, which I may do that. But you want to get just a nice sharp point. Okay, that's what we're going to use. So let's go up here now. Okay, so we're going to just figure out where these little palm trees will be. Let's see how this starts right there. And then you just take your designer brush and just start designing out the how the palms are going to be. Just like that right there. Okay, and then you're going to start to work out these little palms. Just like little flicks. Just like that. See that? So simple to do. These are little bitty small ones. Just like that. See how they go on? These are tiny. About like that there. You could even put a little small one right there. Really is how you ever you decide to do the little palm trees. So we'll put in a couple more of these little small ones in here. But before we do that, we'll just kind of uh, add a little bit of a shadow here to that one. Then we can have another one kind of lays in about right there, a little bigger, a little bit taller one. In the same way, we'll just do a little, little design here, however you decide you want to do it. One that way right there. And you've already got a really good start to your palm tree. Just flick them out. Okay. Just like that. This is the exact same technique you're going to use for your bigger palm trees. With the little ones, they just go on so quickly. This here is like a pull down stroke, then a flick back stroke. Just follow the angle you already put in, and you'll be able to get a palm tree up pretty fast and really easily. There we go. But just practice them. Practice them. And I'm telling you, you're going to really enjoy doing them. Like 
that there. Might even put a little bit more on the top of this one. There we go. So we got those two little palm trees done. And we'll probably add a third one back in here as well. And so we'll just say where that one's going to be. We'll say it goes out that way. On its shadow. It's very important adding your shadows to that one. And so we'll just say there's one that comes out about like that. A bit more crooked like. And does the same technique. You just give it a little design. And just start working out your little palm tree. But you can do this to sew all your little tropical scenes. Or, but it's the exact same technique as you do for the big ones, small ones. And you'll just find that it really adds a lot to your paintings. There we have it. There's our three little palm trees. Okay, and then we just ease it back right there, just like that. Just like that. You have your little your little uh, shadows in there. That really, this really helps so much. Really sets these into the painting. Really makes it come to life. Okay, so now we can start working on a couple big, big old palm trees real quick. Okay, so here we go, boys. We're going to make our big old palm trees now. And you just decide on how it goes. See, ran out of paint, but you can still see the pattern. Okay, so let's get that pattern in there. I need to thin that paint down just a itty bit more. I can fill in all those little cracks and things. Just like that right there. And again, the same technique applies. So we're going to start working on our palm laying it out. Okay, so we'll go right here. Go down, just like that. Like that there. Just working it in. It's so simple once you get it laid out. Something like that there. And we can add in more if we need to. Like that. That's if I decide to, but we'll probably end up not doing that, but we'll see. And then just flick it down. And having that light come through it really adds a lot to it. Something like that right there.
see that. Don't forget to thin down your paint. And just keep working your palm tree in. And before you know it, you'll have yourself a big, beautiful palm tree. I like that right there. Even add a couple little tops like that to it. Make sure you keep it open though. You don't have to always do it, but this just on these type of paints like this, it really does help. You can even take and make some little darker tones and hit them in there with a little bit darker. Just getting it started. Just like that there. See? You gave yourself a little palm tree pretty quickly. Pretty easily. There we go. That'll get it kind of going for us. Let me fix these strokes a little bit more. You could even add another branch in there if you wanted to, but they can leave it like that. So I'll tell you what, we'll add our little shadow into the bottom of this one as well. I'm going to use the number three fan brush just to add that one in. You can use the you can use the fill fan brush if you or not fan brush, but the liner brush if you choose to do that. So then you just have to decide where else you want a palm tree to live at. You could put one right through here. I think would look good. So I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and chart doing that one, laying that one out. So I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna place this, because I'm gonna cover this one up. But I do wanna place it somewhere. Don't want to be too bendy. Just trying to figure it out. That's the hard part sometimes, figuring out where I'm gonna put one at. So deciding where it goes is the hard part, because right here, I wanna add in a palm tree for sure. 
So I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want this one to lay. Some there. So I did cover up that back one a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm just going to take a chance with it. And figure out where you want it to go and just do it. So I did add a little bit darker paint to this one. So I can go over top of this palm tree a little easier, the background palm tree. Okay. So then we start laying out this palm. like that. Okay, you can see there's another branch on this one that that one didn't have. So you just got to play around with it and then decide on exactly how you want it to go and then just just play with it. There we go. And then we'll just start filling it in. Oops, see I made a boo-boo there, didn't I? It's okay, the other palm tree will cover that up anyway. The other palm will. See, it's like it never happened, right? Ain't the most exciting thing in the world, but it's fun to do. It's very calming, especially with these colors. It takes a little bit longer to do these type of palm trees, but they're really fun to do. But that they do add a lot to a painting. Okay. And a lot of people haven't seen the original first painting project we did. So I think this will give you something new that you haven't seen yet, some of you. And if you did watch the original, I know some of you have been, have been watching since season one, which is incredible. We'll have to see much more close-up, much more detail uh, recording of this painting. Or one very similar to it, right?
This one's almost completed though. It's been really fun to redo this painting, kind of revisit from 10 years ago, which is crazy. I can't believe it's been 10 years. But again, this is just how to get the thing to do it, how to do the palm trees. You can decide however you want to do it. You can add highlights to it if you wanted to. But uh, I'm going to leave it like this because I think it really, the background really adds to it. Okay, and I think that there will get us our palm tree. And then we'll just add on our shadow at the bottom. And you can use the, the liner brush too to do that. And you can set it into the painting. That easily. Get yourself a, get yourself a nice little palm trees here. We can even add some little palm trees on that little island too if we decide to do that. Which we may do it. Let's go ahead and we'll add us in a two little palm trees over here I think will look good. Maybe one that kind of sits. Maybe one palm tree. Maybe one will do it. I already see it against that background there. Okay. But that's okay. It'll be sitting here. You'll be able to see it just fine, I think. It's another nice little palm tree. A little bit more darker paint, so I, maybe I can see it a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Now we can obviously add another little palm tree if we decide to. Tell you what, we will add another one over here, I think. Mine is 
as well. Might as well. Okay, then if we do this one here, we'll be pretty much finished. I'm gonna add, I think, more black to this color, just so it'll pop off a little better. Okay, then we start filling this one in, then we can see if we want to add another branch or two to it in a minute. Something about like that there, I think would be okay. Come on over here on that side of it. There we go. Might even on this little small one over here. May go ahead and set it my level. Couple more branches there. Which resembles more of those South Carolina type palm trees, which is the ones that only ones that I've ever seen, so. There we go. And then the same thing on the bottom. We'll go to the bottom real quick. I'm just going to shoot a little bit of that that way. Now you may be asking about the water. We can add it right into the water, actually. Just let it go down like that. And this one here just kind of. Like that there. And we can just kind of use a. We can use our filbert uh, filbert brush. We can use our uh, handy dandy fan brush. If I can ever remember the remember it. There we go. Easy. There we go. And then. We'll add in some tall grasses at the bottom of it. Okay, so right down through here, which will cover up the shadow anyway from that. We're gonna add in some tall grass because the original one also had some tall, some tall grasses in it. And so we'll just do it. We're shooting some burnt sienna here, thin down. Really good. Just throw them just about anywhere, really. 
with the maternals into uh, cattails if we decide to, which we may do that. That's what we probably did. We'll probably turn it into cattails. I think that'll be cool. Okay, so we'll turn it into cattails. I'm just going to use the darker burnt umber we made up earlier. My little cattails here. Some mild corn dogs. Go. Maybe you can get another little mild corn dog or two living over there. There we go. And I think with that, I have a finished little painting. Actually, I think before we go, before we call it finished, let's put us in a, a few little birds. I'm going to use burnt sienna for that. I don't remember if we did that on the original or not, but. A few little birds in there. And I'll take a clean brush to just to fix up that little fingerprint. And there we go. There, and that's a finished painting. There. All right, with that, I have a finished little painting. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something new and maybe got to see more detail uh, from a project we did 10 years ago. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Just something nice and warm, man. It's been zero degrees here in Kentucky. Finally got warm against me to get back in the studio. And I really hope you enjoy doing this. With some new little techniques, I think, that you'll, like, and you'll enjoy doing. Some new play on colors. And I think you'll really have a fun time playing around with this project. But before we go, we're going to have our scripture of the day. Alright, the scripture of the day is coming from Matthew chapter 4. One of my favorite scriptures here. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man should not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alright, I hope you enjoyed those scriptures. Send you on your way with a little bit of the word from the Lord. But we are all supposed to live by the word of God. Uh, each and every word. So, Hope that is a blessing to you today and hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you all again so much for 10 awesome years of getting Mucky Face together. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it so much. This one here I think you really will enjoy. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please like, comment, share with all your friends. You can share it on Facebook, any social media platform you have. Please share our content so we can get more people here. We want to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. We won't be able to do that without your support. And thank you all so much for those, again, who sent in videos, who support us all throughout these 10 years. It's been awesome. Make sure, if you need some supplies, check out thomasrsupply.com. That's where you can get my signature products, my brushes and mediums, um, all other kind of cool stuff we have on there. So please check out thomasrsupply.com. You can check out brandthomasart.com for our instructors. So I have some certified instructors up there who are teaching workshops. Um, if you want to become an instructor, you can get information there at brandthomasart.com as well. Again, thank you all so much for an awesome 10 years. It's been amazing. Thank you again. I love you, but Jesus loves you more. God bless you, and God willing, we'll see you real soon.